Okay, cl the closest uh, ever, uh, and normally we are at one IU, and we're just a little bit under that, and we're at almost, and just basically watch the light minutes, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and check. As I go into that data, we'll basically go ahead and basically you should be able to see this good enough. I'll, I guess, maybe go up to, what, 400, and we'll scan around a little bit. But as you can see, there is still intensive, humongous CME action. because We'll plop back down to, like, 200%, and we'll get a better view of the window and the time and the date. And as you can see, the sun is still putting off massive CME action. It no, shows no time soon of slowing down. So let's go to also something else I'm going to end up looking up on. I'm starting to wonder about the interstellar cloud and also the asteroid belts that NASA has said that aren't anywhere close around. Okay, now I'm going to minus down on this, and you're going to get an idea of what this interstellar cloud, as these pictures are all matched up in this huge shot, okay, which is basically this, which will show you basically our local bubble that we are normally used to being around. Okay, the sun is in the supergiant's main sequence. Okay, the direction of solar system motion that we all know that we're going to go through, okay? We are doing our turn. You flip-flop this because we always follow the sun, okay? And the sun follows this direction of solar system motion, okay? And we follow it also, okay? So what's interesting is the scientists out there, as you can see, have gotten this observed by IBX satellite before. And what I showed you on my recent video, uh, basically, we are getting interruption because of those uh, satellite feeds are going to get interrupted from that massive CME that's going on out there in space. So let's go see what we got for fresh CME. Uh, so basically, the coronal bubble of the Milky Way galaxy is that there. Okay, That is the sun. We rotate around the sun 365 point whatever odd days a year, plus the known of the idea of the telegraphs getting the blast from CME years ago, heating up and burning a lot of wood structures down that they were connected to. Telegraph lines, yes. We had the telegraph before we had the phone lines. That was our first phone line was telegraph line, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? And I.e., nothing much ever really changes. No matter what. Over hundreds of years, ladies and gentlemen. Did you talk? So a good example here, folks, this is back in of 2010, March, but the diet, this is how you read the graphs, folks. Whenever you got a hump, and basically that was so massive then, you know, all even the ones now, they're so massive. When they're on the top of the bar, they can't leave the graph because they have nowhere to go, okay? They can be bigger than actually the graph shows. So, yes, more than likely right now we are getting massive stuff. So when you're looking at solar artists, yes, okay, can only go as far as the graph goes, okay? may have been, been higher, quite possibly higher than their graphs or their oscilloscopes will show. And as we see some very interesting stuff on the oscilloscopes that we've seen earlier today. And it doesn't matter if it's Mercury or Mars, but Mercury or Mars is getting blasted again, as we see on the 28th. It's pretty much, I'll try to see if I can get the 29th, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get anything from till the 30th or something like that until maybe Tuesday, Wednesday on. But this is going on on the 28th, so... There's not much change up there, folks, what's going on. That's why we're not getting any images right now, because the satellites are getting blasted like that planet there, which is more than likely Mercury or Mars. It really doesn't make any difference. And as you see, it does a CME reactive flare because it lights itself up and makes itself look bigger. Okay? And... Yes, it's getting the energy from the CME, which makes we've already proved in the past that we have seen a what they used to call an inner lens flare, which is a bunch of BS, and the idea that we know that the uh, planets can pretty much, their atmosphere can tell that something's going to happen before it happens. And if you really watch this slow enough, there as it is right there, it knew it was going to happen. It kind of did a little right about here. It does a little CME reactive flare to a CME of the sun. Okay, Watch the atmosphere right about right now. It started blowing itself up a little bit. A little Mercury or Mars right there. Doesn't really matter if it's Mercury or Mars, but as you also see that there actually is a planet in front and behind that also. So lots of stuff showing up, even though it might be millions and billions of miles apart out there in space. But remember when there is a big bang, how fast stuff could actually travel, because we know we can travel hella fast through space. Okay. So when the particles have been in a big bang or big bangs like I perceive that there is, way more than one big bang, 
that uh, stuff has traveled billions of miles in space through different uh, big bangs. And the idea that it didn't take long for it to separate billions of miles because when it exploded like that, and you're just getting an idea of what the sun's going to do in the future, or the supergiants also with all this massive action, folks, because we have never seen this kind of action before, okay? No matter what they try to say that they will, yes, the sun has CME and flared before, but nothing like this before. Magnificent, awesome, and a little scary. So, anyway, we'll keep an eye on it. We'll keep watching. Because that's way more than just the sun blasting out there. That's the supergiants and, yeah, there you're going to get a more idea that that's supergiants and the sun. Because check that out up high. The sun is not that damn big. It be going all across space with all that CME action like that. So let me pop down a little bit to like 150 and then come back up. And then we'll, don't worry about the date too much, but look at all of that humongous CME out there. Okay, and that's why we're not getting any shots lately because more than likely they're getting... Signals intercepted. We already can see the electrical signals on the oscilloscopes. Let me go to that on our uh, on uh, Solar Artist. Hang on. Okay, we already pretty much knew about this, but basically this is new. We've, so we finally get some pictures in again. So then, more than likely, that should be Venus. Okay, it should be Venus, and so Venus. No matter what, when you sit back with a camera and you look at it. Venus is doing a lot more than what it would normally look like there. Okay, they show you all calm there. Well, that's Venus. Okay. Yep, it is getting, as you can see, it is getting some very. So the idea that when yeah, when I was showing you there earlier, now don't get me wrong, that that could be Venus too, also, but it doesn't really matter if it's Venus, Mercury, or Mars. We just know that it's getting a blast. But more than likely, this is Venus for damn sure in these shots. The other one more than likely should be Mercury or Mars. Pretty damn sure that it's Mercury or Mars. Uh, I'll go to my beacon connection. Don't really rely on that too much, but we'll see what we got for beacon. And then it's, that's your CME action, folks. That's for Earth, and we're getting these belts of it, okay? And when it gets brighter, that yellow and so forth and so on, already hit us. You're going to see some down, this or that, certain areas, okay? certain areas of the world. There's our axis again. And the north is pretty much, but it's actually the north has taken off a little bit to the right now since earlier today. So we got massive movement there. And let's go to the earthquakes real fast and see what's, what's going on with the twist and so forth. And you see the, how we're getting dark? It'll get dark sooner or earlier now. I can refresh that. It'll update on the time and so forth. But we've got big 6.3 there, uh, 5.0 and 5.1 out there, 5.2 out in the Caribbean, it's very deep south and the very deep south Ar uh, Atlantic, sorry, the very deep Atlantic Ocean to the Caribbean there. Uh, so things are picking up again as if the objects go by as we had a little bit of a lull. And let me just pop real fast and you can see what's been going on for like the last week, like we've been telling everybody. And this is just a week and a half, not no more than 12 days. I don't believe that this goes. Okay, so a lot of activity, a lot of earthquakes. And your media is lull to nothing. Okay, because they are not going to, and it's smart not to scare because earthquakes just happen. And as long as we don't build on soft, sandy ground, like happened out on the San Francisco quake where they built on waste property, because it was 100 years or something after the quake, and they built on that sandy surface, and then 50, 75 years later, boom, okay? So 1859 with the CME action out there in our electrical atmosphere and stuff. If you watched the video before this, it should be uploading now. Uh, I was able to pop this other video off. So... Here's our shot from the day, and then basically we're going to also show you that basically you see they're blocking out. So that's what you want to look for is what's getting blocked out right there. And it's in conjunction with that dark star planet, dark star planet or whatever, and that triangulation and straightness across there. Let me freeze this. There's 400, and then I'll go to 1,000, folks. You know I'm not playing. And yes, it's part of our massive job. They've been blocked out before, and basically that is what you think is a bird hologram down in uh, Nehemiah, okay, right there in, in, in Antarctica. Right there is that massive solar remnant right there. That's one of those magneticals of what you see on those graphs that I showed you in the video just before this one. Because I'm going to go and put the tags on that so you have that video up, okay? So it's from across these black stars. 
it's a massive uh, uh, basically I would basically since they're calling everything an asteroid belt it's some massive asteroid belt that's across the huge aspects of space up there folks millions and possibly even billions of miles from there to there across uh, up top above the sun because basically I'll pop you down to give you a, like a 200% shot and there you know what you're looking at we were looking from here across to there okay and those are all huge planets out there folks because Venus and then the idea that some of this stuff is way the hell far away and bigger than Venus but the idea it's showing up up there and it's freaking some people out and stuff like that the number one thing is is just the CME action to be concerned about electrical uh, weather uh, CME is coronal mass ejections, electrical magna from the supergiants in the sun, and you can see that it's way more than just the sun because you can see how huge, okay, that is more than likely Mercury or Mars, and then how huge the expanse. That's not just the sun blowing up up there, folks. Okay, it's not just the sun. It's the sun and the supergiants. The other suns that are four to seventy-eight times the size of the sun. There's a hundred of them in the supergiants main sequence, and the sun is in the supergiants main sequence. Okay, and whether this is just their glitch of uh, camera action, and actually, I think there was just somewhat of a glitch of camera action there. So that's a recent shot of the 29th, but it's got a bunch of overlay on it. Okay, so the sun's all right. But it's sure getting a lot of action from the super giants, as you can see these, and all the other. As you can see, you can pretty much just see tracks of stuff that's rolling around or hitting, because otherwise you wouldn't get such cooling bands of effect like that, and so forth and so on. So it's rumbling around the super giants with a massive dead star planet stuff, and also maybe some small stars. So it's it's no secret. Uh, they know it, astronomers know it, and you can't hide it. And that's where we get these stripes and stuff from, from cooling or heating or rubbing. There's the baby remnant up there that's also more than likely might be causing some a lot of that rubbing because we know of that baby remnant right there. It's uh, And also all the other masses, mass 50 and all the other ones that we've showed you and so forth and so on. And then Rigel Kentaurus A, which we know is up close by it around somewhere too, but we just know absolutely there's no ifs, ands, or buts at this marble. Remnant is up close to the sun, bopping around, and so forth and so on. Either that or the sun's got a word on its ass. But that remnant is a lot more than just sitting there rolling around all the time and stuff like that. So because we, we see that when we look down, I think I could just go ahead and uh, let me go back. Uh, I can zoom in on this, and we'll get a good shot, and then we'll get go back over there to the marble roll. Yep, you can't hide it. There we are, zoomed in pretty good. And then there's tons of other stuff up there, too, so hard to, to pick out on this one or not, but... They can't even hide that on overlay, folks. So there's one of your marbles. It's going to be interesting to find out over the years whether that's the only thing that's might making the marks, and it's the only one rubbing up there, or what is rubbing, actually. Okay, but we do know that there's plenty of of signs that the idea there's probably maybe way more than just what we think we see, or what we know we see. I mean, but the idea there could be way more, because we there's been tons of shots where we find other stuff. And even if you get in there and blow on that one there, you can see a dark spot right there of more than likely something huge because that would be even bigger or probably even bigger than Venus, us, Earth, oh, damn, for damn sure. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That's even probably to like an eighth of the size of Jupiter or something like that right there. And then they'll say, oh, it's, it's a deal, but it's not. We can see it entail the difference at the eye that there's stuff that's bouncing into the sun i.e. like right there because it bump into a thousand percent and there you go triangulation of something and those are huge that's bigger than earth and whether it's hitting or not maybe it's even far enough off that it's just sitting there getting its ass fried it doesn't really matter stuff's up there and we've seen how the the sun's uh reacts to uh anything getting close to it comments so forth and so on so and then we're getting tons of CME action so more facts and data sharing and this is all stuff today so freshest shots that I could give you and then basically I gave you what was more late in the week